Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of the anointed. Verse 10. For the day is... In, I love this. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now think about that. Now the sanctuary has been reached and we are able to stand before the Lord and see His face. The conclusion is easily reached. A few moments in the presence of God is greater than anything Satan or this world could have to offer a thousand times over. Now why would anything God offer be a thousand times over better than what the devil can offer you? Because the Bible says that Satan is nothing but the father of all lies. Okay, think about this something. If the devil puts anything in front of you, we're going to use this as an example, a piece of fruit. If he puts the most delicious piece of fruit in front of you and offers it to you and says, all you've got to do is simply reach out, take it, and eat it. Think about that. Anything the devil is going to give you is going to have a worm dead center of it. Can I get an amen? And the Bible also says that the wages of sin is death. So anything that you're following Satan gives you is going to lead to death and destruction not only in this life, but in the next. Jesus says that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now a lot of people want to twist that scripture and make it look like that if you serve Christ, you're going to get rich. Well, let me tell you something. The Bible says that He will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Scripture does not say He will supply all of your greeds according to His riches and glory. The Bible warns the believer that God... That a, a, a servant of God cannot serve both God and mammon or money. If our hearts truly after God, it will be about living our life before Him wholly without sin and being obedient to Him and the spreading the gospel message. Those are true hallmarks and humility, of course. And you'll know Christians by the fruit that they bear. So in verse 9, it's believed that to be a prayer for a ruling king, either for Solomon or the 19 descendants who were kings of the kingdom of Judah, in this brief but sincere prayer, which begins with the word, Behold, take notice, God is identified as our shield, meaning He was the protector of Israel, who was called to look upon with favor upon the face of the anointed king. Prayer for God's favor to be granted to the ruling king was in effect the same as praying for the well-being of the nation. Now whether you like who's in the White House or not, I would encourage you to pray for me. Amen? And I think the one we got in there right now can use all the prayer he can get. And I say that respectively. Praying for God's favor to be granted to the ruling king in effect is the same as praying for the well-being of a nation. The king was anointed, ordained to his office to serve as God's representative to the people. Some of the kings lived up to divine calling, others do not. And we've had different presidents here in the United States, some of that have been godly. And we've had a few that have left us scratching our heads. In verse 10, the psalmist discloses that he, who was a musical male and a descendant of Korah, who ministered in the temple, also served as a doorkeeper in the temple. This is revealed in this testimony that he regarded the single day spent in the temple worshiping God as better than a thousand days spent anywhere else. You know, I can remember being a kid, Mama dragging me to church, and I was thinking, I want him to be anywhere else but the house of God. I mean, that's what I thought. Seriously. But as I've grown older, as I've grown and matured in the faith, I've realized there's nowhere else that I would rather be than in the presence of the Lord. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. How many people out back down here at United Memorial Garden this morning wish they had one more opportunity. How many people? This very morning, hell is full of people that wish they had one more opportunity to go to church. So this is what I want to encourage you to do this morning. Praise God like you ain't praised Him in a long time. Show the devil that you're one of those in Psalms 150. Just don't say it. Live it. Sing it. Let everything that has breath Show the devil that you still got the breath of God in you. Come on. We all may not feel that greatest. We, nobody might be, we might have a few rusty spots on us. I might. I'm talking about myself here. And let me tell you something. 
I've still got one more praise in me. i still got one more time to praise Him. I've still got one more thing to praise Him for. And if you start thinking like that, you'll just keep on going from the next to the next. Psalms 84, 11 through 12. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from Him who walk uprightly. I love that. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will, will He withhold from who walk uprightly. Here, we must not make the mistake in the passage of assuming that we know what the good things are. We must allow Him to give us good things that He desires to give. In verse 12 it says, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in You. Here this man who places his trust in God will always be blessed. There are two of the most encouraging verses in the entirety of the Bible. When close attention is given to what they say, first God is His people. He's the sun and the shield. He gives us the light and He protects us. That is God is our light and our lighter for living and we ought to live in this world. And He also our protector and defender and all who live for Him. Secondly, God says, we give grace and glory. Amen? In verse 11, all these blessings of God are the lives who come under the heading of grace and glory. Every gift of God is of, of His grace, His favor toward us, which we do not deserve and cannot earn, but which He gives us freely. The result of God's grace extended to us and received by His glory, that is, being victorious in a living God. Third, verse 11, No good thing will God withhold from them that walk uprightly, living to please God. Fourth, blessed are in all the ways is any person who trusts in the Lord. That's taken from verse 12. So what does it mean that God is both a sun and a shield to His people? I pose that question to you. And also, what assurance should we take from the promise that God will not withhold any good thing from those who live pleasing to Him? Think about this. When we live in obedience to God, we are in essence living in covenant with Him. And His Word, like I said previously, says, I will supply all of your needs. Now does that say some of your needs? If it said that, he would have wrote it that way. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory. So there are important practical reasons for attending church, for participating in public worship. Of most importance, we do so to learn that God and His will for our lives and to experience God's presence. We are also to learn about how God and what He can do for us and how much we need Him. I don't know about you guys, in 2024, this 46-year-old man knows that he needs God more now than ever. Anybody else with me? I know I need Him now more than ever. And I know that this world needs what's in all of us, this gospel message. Again, God has not called His church to be a lump on a log. He said, I called you to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, but glorify the Lord. We used to sing the song when we were young. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. So we're going to hide it under a bushel today? No. Nope. It must be what God's called us to be. I'm going to close with this. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are all called by Him to in fellowship of all those who believe in Him. That means everybody in the faith and that fellowship in His church. To put ministry in action, we must pray for God's blessing on the local church, on the local church workers and leadership, and be like what Pastor Jamie preached on here about two weeks ago. Let's be the lookouts for those who work and lead in the church. Let's pray for them on a continual basis. Amen? Let's be faithful in our attendance, our time, and our financial support. If you'll stand, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and close out this wonderful teaching that God has given us the opportunity to learn. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for the opportunity of being in Your house. 
Lord, I pray this morning that the word that's been planted in our hearts and minds, Lord, that you would give the increase, you get the glory, and you get the harvest. And let all things be done in your holy name. Even come quickly, Lord Jesus, and all the saints of God said. Amen. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time this morning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you.